All you have to do, did I miss you, ladies? I'm sorry. But if you can tell me right away, not waiting for like 20 minutes. Some people actually do that. I think that's a good idea. Go really quick, my arm will start. Okay, so all you really have to do here is draw some pictures and do some thinking. Okay, so let me give you sort of the um, preliminary kind of lead-in stuff. Do you guys know what a ticker tape is? You know what a ticker tape parade is? Never heard that, ticker tape parade. Okay. So, this is ticker tape. It's basically just a long, it's like a roll of paper. We want to use it as toilet paper. Right. A ticker tape parade. Okay, I'm going to give you some history. Way back when, all you back to be in front of. What's the ticker on TSN? Or on the news channels? What's the ticker? When you're watching TSN or Sports, Sportsnet? The ticker. What's the ticker? You don't know what that is? No. The thing that crawls across the bottom and gives you the score? Oh. That's called the ticker. Right. So way, way, way back when, um, the stock market, if you wanted to know what the stock prices were, you had to work in a building that had a ticker tape machine. So how it would work is the machine would spit out the stock price on a piece of paper like this. It would be on a big, long roll of paper like this. And then if there's 300 stocks in the stock index, and then you do it. So you had to go through them all and find the one you wanted, and then it would repeat, right? So at the end of the day, the stock market uh, companies would have a lot of this stuff that was printed on, right? So when the Yankees would win the World Series, as in the did back then, they would have a big parade down in Fifth Avenue in New York City, and all the stock market companies would throw the paper out the window. Hence the term, a ticker tape parade. Now they just use that colored confetti stuff, right? Okay. So it was actually recycling one point. Now, what does that have to do with physics? Pretty much nothing. We still use this paper, or we used to. We either have a little device, right? And you would attach a card to this paper, right? And there'll be a little device that would make a mark on the ticker tape like every half a second, like this. Okay, and if the card was going fast, then those mark space would be spaced out. Just like remember the, the lesson I had there with the yellow, little yellow car? There I go, right? And if the car was moving at a constant velocity, those spaces would be the same distance apart, and if it was slowing down, they'd be close together. Okay? So that's the history of the ticker tape. Okay, so you're going to draw little ticker tape motion. Okay, so I think the first one that you have is this, am I right? Constant positive velocity. Okay, so, observe, now I'm going to read the first one, and then I'm going to try to speed it up to make it a little bit more um, time appropriate. Okay, so I'll read the first one, and then I'll, I'll abbreviate a little bit. Observe that the motion below moves with a constant velocity in the positive direction. Of course, positive direction is to the? To the right. The ticker tape shows that each consecutive dot is the same distance apart, which means a constant velocity. The position time graph. Now, I'm going to get to the position time graph. So what I want you to do is, in that space, you're going to draw, you're going to draw this, you're going to draw some graphs down below as well, too. So leave yourself some space. Now, obviously, you can't animate it, but I just want you to put the dots, put an arrow showing going to the right, and put the dots evenly spaced. Okay, does that make sense? So you're drawing this, you're just drawing the dots evenly spaced. And this is constant positive velocity. So constant positive velocity. So now, the position time graph. What would the position time graph be for this type of motion? Straight line? Do you mean flat or do you mean straight? What would it be flat, Benny? Position time graph. If it's flat, that means its position is staying the same, which would mean that it's stopped. It would be straight. It should be like so. Position time graph. Notice that it's coming out of zero, zero, and it's only in the positive area. Okay? Now, coming up 
in a testing situation, I would expect you to be able to, given this type of motion, like if I give you a picture, you can draw the position time graph, or you can identify it if it was multiple choice. Okay? What would the corresponding velocity time graph look like for that kind of motion? Would it be straight? Would it be flat? Would it be curved? It would be straight, Jason? Yeah. Would it be flat? No? Remember, the slope of the position time graph is the velocity. What's the slope like here, Mallory? Is, is it positive or negative, the slope? It's positive, that's correct. Is it a constant value? It is. So what would the corresponding velocity time graph look like then? Flat. It would be a flat line. And the value that it's at, let me just zoom in a little bit here. The value that it's at, in this case here, it looks like it's about 12. That's the slope of this line. Right? The slope of this line is 12. Okay. Challenge question for the day. What would the acceleration time graph look like? Keeping in mind, the acceleration is the like slope of the velocity time graph. Colby, what's the slope of the velocity time graph? Zero, absolutely. So the graph, the acceleration time graph would simply be a flat line right at zero. Does that make sense? Give me the nod of the understanding. Oh, I don't see a lot of nod of understanding. Are we good? Yeah? Okay. What's the next one? I still see people right here. I'll pause for a second. Okay. The next one is constant negative velocity. What is the ticker tape going to look like? Are the dots going to be evenly spaced? Yeah. How do you know? Because it says constant and it's negative, so now they're going to be moving to the to the left. So the dots are going to be moving to the left in a constant um, fashion. What are the corresponding position time graph, velocity time graph, and acceleration time graphs going to look like? Anna, what do you say? It would be negative, the velocity time graph. What do you mean by it would be negative? Say again. It would go into the negative, would it be straight? This way time graph? Yeah? Like so? Notice that it's coming out of zero and it's going down into the negative. So when you're drawing that, make sure that you've got it. Like I would suggest drawing it like this. Okay. Does that make sense? Lane? Yeah? Okay. What's the corresponding wave? What would be the corresponding velocity time graph? What's the slope of the position time graph? Positive or negative? Negative. Constant or not constant? Constant. So the graph would be in the negative, but... You mean flat? Negative flat, like minus 12. It's at minus 12. It is minus 12 is the slope of the position time graph over here. So it's starting to make a little bit of sense to you. It's coming all together. What would the corresponding acceleration time graph look like? It'd be flat at zero, like that? Notice that it is exactly the same as the previous one. How come? It's not changing speed. Now, as a little aside here, anyone planning on taking advanced math next semester or maybe next year? Mr. Ray? Calculus? Anyone? Nobody? Maybe? It's a while away. I guess you guys are going to learn. Well, if you do, you will start learning about what's called a derivative. And you would say, and you're certainly going to see this at the university level, if if position time is the graph, right, if it's a function, P sub T, you guys know function notation, P sub T? 
right? So we would say that the velocity time graph would be the derivative of position. And acceleration would be the derivative of that. Okay? And if you're going the other way, it's called um, integrals. So when you start hearing words like pr uh, prime and derivative and integrals, we're talking about this kind of stuff. It'll all make sense to you at some point, hopefully. Okay, so let's talk about the next one. Positive velocity, positive acceleration. Now, there's a big, long paragraph there. I'm not going to read it. Positive velocity, positive acceleration means it's moving to the right. Positive acceleration means that it's speeding up. So what are the dots going to look like, Alana? They're going to start together and get bigger. Is that the same? Okay. And you would be right. Start together close and get bigger. They're starting together and they are increasing in distance, right? Just like the ticker tape that I was talking about. I should, should have kept one of those machines that makes them some marks. Oh. What would the position time graph look like? Curved? Curved up or curved down, Jason? Like when you say curved up, you mean like getting steeper? Bingo. Getting steeper. Getting steeper because the slope of the position time graph is the speed, and it's speeding up, so that means that the slope has to be getting steeper, which makes it curve. What would the corresponding velocity time graph look like? Now we're starting to get a little bit harder. What would the corresponding velocity time graph look like? Zoe, it'd be up at an angle like that. Why do you say that? Because it's speeding up, so the velocity has to be getting bigger, right? You're absolutely 100% right. Right? The velocity is increasing in value. The, this is a value of the slope. This is a graph of the slope of this line. The slope at the start is 0, and then the slope goes up to 10, 20, and almost up to 30. Right? It's a graph of the slope. It's the derivative. Say it again, Anna. I hear you asking a question. But just not loud enough for my own ears to hear. Pardon me? Yeah, it's getting faster at the same rate. That's called the start of the A acceleration. What would the acceleration time graph here look like, Jen? Oh my gosh! Yeah, you do. The acceleration time graph is a graph of the slope of the velocity. What's the slope of the velocity graph? It is positive. Is it constant? Is it a straight line? Yes. Yeah. So it's positive and just so it's exactly the same, just not at zero, it's just above zero. The slope of this line is about 1.8. Making sense? Yeah? Okay. You want to try the next one on your own? What do you think? Maybe, maybe use a pencil. Try the next one on your own. Use a pencil. This is positive velocity negative acceleration. Hang on here. Let's just, let's just, I'll give you the start of that. Positive velocity means it's moving to the right, but negative velocity means that it's going to be slowing down. So going to the right and slowing down. What are the dots going to look like? Getting closer together. Okay, you guys try the graphs while I do my test. Okay, so what's that position time gap going to look like? It's going to start, sorry, it's going to curve down like this. Oh, Jason thinks it's going to go up like this and get flat. You think this, Jason? Yeah. And Jenny, what do you think? Oh, you think this, right? What do you guys think? Well, usually where we start is the zero. 
But maybe they need your sprite. Maybe it just needs to be like. Well, so I guess it'd be like this. But then that would be moving negative, wouldn't it, right? Jason's right. And the way I like to think about it is, they, I always think about the slope, but then again, I've taken a couple courses in calculus. Um, is it slowing down, which means that the, because the slope of the position time graph is the velocity, and it's slowing down, that means the velocity is going to zero, which means that the slope has to be going to zero, which means that it's flattening off, right? This is slowing down. Okay. Velocity time graph. Again, velocity time graph is a graph of the slope. Here the slope is starting steep and going to zero. Like that, Jason? Right? Well, this is a graph of the slope. The slope, it's getting flatter. The slope, it's getting going to zero. So the value here goes to zero. Am I making some sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not just rocking because that's a rocking chair. You're in agreement. Are you cold? You okay? Okay. Okay. Acceleration time graph. Trent, I know you missed a couple here, but what do you think? Acceleration time graph. Positive or negative slope? I'll make it a bit simple for you. Negative slope, constant slope. Straight line, right? So constant negative. What's the one thing that we've seen in all the acceleration time graphs? They're always flat. What the heck does that mean? It means the acceleration is always constant. Is the acceleration always going to be constant in real life? No. Does acceleration ever change? Yes. Now, remember when I was talking about these derivatives and I said velocity is the derivative of position and acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Someone usually says to me, Mr. Bennett, is there a derivative of acceleration? Mr. Bennett, is there a derivative of acceleration? There is. I'm glad you asked. Guess what it's called? It's called the jerk. You know, if you're driving with someone, maybe like my father-in-law, hopefully he's not listening to the video. He's a bit of a jerky driver. I don't mean he's a jerk. I just mean that he tends to like ride the gas and then on the brakes and ride the gas and on the brakes. Kind of jerky. You know anyone like that? Don't say it about. Okay. Wade's when they Wade's like that? Is that right? Like before it goes through here. Oh, you're not one of those two-foot drivers, are you? Okay, good. Yeah, when the acceleration is not constant, it's called the jerk, right? And there's actually a derivative of that, I don't know the name. There is a name for it, I don't know. Okay, you try this one entirely on your own. Use a pencil. Negative velocity, negative acceleration. You try. Those of you who are still struggling probably need some help. So let's look here. Negative velocity, negative acceleration means moving to the left, but negative acceleration. If they're both in the same direction, it's going to be speeding up. So we have it speeding up to the left, so getting farther apart with us. And if it's speeding up to the left, the displacement time graph is going to be curved. Right? Um, speeding up means that it's got to be getting steeper, but it's going left, so it's going to be in a negative region. So, is that what you have? Right? Starting at zero, getting faster, which means it's got to be steeper, but because it's going left, it's going to be steeper negative. Right? Velocity time graph, it's the, the slope here is zero, and it gets steeper and steeper. So the velocity time graph starts at zero and goes down. Are you seeing a pattern in all of these? I hope so. Acceleration time graph? would be a flat line. Oh, challenge question for the day. What would the jerk graph look like for that? What would the jerk graph look like? Well, the jerk is the derivative of the acceleration, or the slope of the acceleration, 
And the slope of the acceleration here would be zero. zero. So the jerk would actually be flat at zero. No jerks. Nice and smooth. Okay, is this the last one? Almost, yeah. This is the last one of that brand, right? Okay, try that one. Negative velocity, positive acceleration. Negative velocity, positive acceleration means... Negative velocity means moving to the left. Positive acceleration means that it's opposite, so it's going to be slowing down. So moving left and slowing down. Okay, so it's moving to the left. The position time graph is going to be in the negative region. If it's slowing down, the slope has to be getting flatter or steeper? Flatter. flatter. So in the negative region, but getting flatter should look like, <clears throat> excuse me, like that? Oh, Chad? And the velocity time graph that corresponds to that? The graph is getting flatter, which means the velocity is approaching zero. So it has to start at some negative value and approach zero. Right? Get closer to zero. And once again, the slope is constant, and this time positive. So in fact, the acceleration is going to be above zero, isn't it? Okay. Think you can handle these on a test situation now? Well, you can test yourself. Okay, the last one says the passing lane. This one's a little bit different, but it gives me an opportunity to talk about a couple things. Okay, I'm almost done. Hang with me here, you guys. So, it says observe the two cars below. You guys don't have the picture, obviously. The blue car starts ahead of the red car. Okay, so picture on the left, picture on the right. Okay, so look at this one here. The blue car starts at position 20. Oh, and then out of nowhere, the red car comes. Which one's going faster? Red car is going faster, right? Since the red car is moving faster, it eventually catches up past the blue car. Observe the velocity time graphs for these two cars. Each motion, car's motion is represented by a horizontal line, indicating a constant velocity. So here, I'm going to show you. Can I not do that? There we go. Velocity time graphs are going to look like that. How come the red graph starts like in the middle there? We only see it after four seconds. We don't know what it's doing ahead of time, right? How come red and blue are both flat? Because they're both moving at constant speed. Which one's moving faster? Red one. We can see that. It's above. It's moving at 20 meters per second. The velocity time graph is moving at um, about, the blue car, sorry, about 6 meters per second. Okay? Um, what's the position time graph going to look like? I'm going backwards here. I'm taking the integral. What, what are the position time graphs going to look like? I thought you put your hand up. Just... Red one's going to be steeper. Are they going to be straight, Jason? Yeah. Straight lines? One's going to be steeper. Are they going to cross? Yeah. Where are they going to cross? At what point? Do we know the position where they're going to cross? 60. Looks like about 60. Right there. You can tell where they cross. Can you tell where they cross from the velocity time graph? Can you tell? Not yet is my answer. But you will. Because eventually you'll learn how to do integration, sort of in a way. And you'll find out that the area here, I'm doing some foreshadowing, the area there is the position, and you're going to compare that to the area there. When those two areas are equal to each other, then they cross. Okay? A little bit harder to do, but if you ever did any calculus, you would see that kind of thing. Okay, time to be quiet about that. I'm going to pause here for a second, and I... Yeah.